Well, uh, good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you, John, for this kind invitation. And um, after I accepted the invitation, I realized how sensitive this topic was. Now I'm the president of the university, and so I, I, I need to be a little bit careful about uh, exact words. You know the, what I mean. Well, I, so I decided to, uh, to read uh, a piece of, uh, of a paper that we wrote together with uh, Renato Pedrosa, also from Unicamp, that was asked uh, by University World News. And then I will show you a little bit of a flavor with some pictures and some ideas of my university. But this text will work as a, an introduction to the, to the topic. So, in early 2013, a transportation fee hike in Sao Paulo, Brazil's largest city, became the catalyst for a series of large street demonstrations, not only in Sao Paulo, but also in other urban centers in the country. The leaders of the movement and most of the participants were young adults, many of them college students. The demonstrations rapidly expanded to become a movement that embraced the poor quality of other public services in the country, such as health and education. They also targeted politicians uh, whose massive spending on infrastructure and facilities ahead of the FIFA World Cup in 2014 and the Rio Summer Olympics in 2016 were perceived as a huge waste of public resources. <coughs> Meanwhile, corruption was increasingly becoming a ma major issue in the country. It is worth noting that frequent outbreaks of violence, typically orchestrated by small groups of well-organized and masked demonstrators caused the wider public and the media to be rather critical of how the movement was evolving. The level of discontent among the younger population caught most of political analysts by surprise. The Brazilian economy had grown steadily and for most of the previous decade, and educational opportunities particularly at the tertiary level, were also increasing. Just to mention an example. Between 2000 and 2013, the number of admissions to higher education institutions tripled from 900,000 to 2.7 million. On another front, most public universities and many private ones had adopted affirmative action policies to expand access for traditionally underrepresented groups, namely Afro-Brazilians and graduates of public high schools. Finally, the government had developed policies for expanding funding for students and private institutions who account for nearly 75% of our tertiary enrollment in Brazil. So the question is, why and where was all this discontent coming from? One possible explanation is that young adults were not really benefiting from the positive trends in both the economy and education. For example, the share of 18 to 24 year olds enrolled in higher education actually decreased from 32% in 2004 to 30% in 2013 while the proportion of those who were neither working nor studying increased slightly, from 23 to 24%. At the same time, the government had raised expectation among young Brazilians by touting the expansion for, of higher education as a guaranteed pathway to better jobs in political campaigns and institutional advertising. In 2014 and 2015, Brazil headed into one of the worst economic recessions in the country's history. As a result, public universities faced major budget restrictions 
uh, and so planned infrastructure investment was delayed or cancelled, new recruits and promotions were postponed, wages were frozen, and student support slashed. Unsurprisingly, student activism increased significantly across the country. For example, students sized on salary negotiations which occur every year in Sao Paulo State's universities to push their own agendas. In one case, in 2016, just to mention one example, students of my university, University of Campinas, occupied the building that houses the president's office. I was not the president yet. Uh, for almost two months, only leaving after extensive negotiations. In fact, many in the campus community were surprised by the level of violence employed by some groups participating in the demonstrations, which included blocking access to classes, disturbing teaching activities, and even thre threats and physical confrontations. The underlying reasons for the more extreme manifestations of students within universities are not yet, are not yet fully understood, as they are likely to be multifaceted. <coughs> students' leaders have usually been tied to national political parties in Brazil, but recently new actors are appearing on the scene. These include organized groups within civil society that are armed with a more focused agendas and, of course, the power of social media. In 2018, 2018 next year, Latin America will celebrate 100 years of the so-called Cordoba reforms in Argentina, which marked a turning point for higher education in the region, including Brazil, as universities began to be established there. These reforms were led by strong student movements in uh, 1918, reforms envisioned universities as progressive and autonomous institutions capable of transforming society. The key concepts of this reform were outlined in the, limin the, so in the called Liminar Manifesto, which included university autonomy, co-governance, tuition-free education, and the importance of community outreach. And this manifesto helped to shape a new identity of the Latin America University. The higher education community still faces the challenge of providing that is committed to fundamental democratic principles, principles and academic values and practices, to ethical behavior and to a sustainable future. Debate on the public character of universities has become commonplace in Brazil, as in many countries, and public universities must be held accountable for how they are using public funds, how they are advancing the public interests. The voice of students must be heard and understood, and the spirit of 1918 should provide insight which is relevant to our times. In fact, recent developments pose a big challenge for university administrations, who must stimulate a deeper dialogue among members of community in a context of extreme polarization and try to stay one step ahead as possible sources of conflict emerge. Universities are not isolated from society, but rather are affected by national and international trends, particularly increasing intolerance and authoritarianism, both of which are related to the current nationalistic mood that has emerged across the globe. Intolerance is def definitely a threat to academic freedom and autonomy, which, uh, uh, to academic freedom and autonomy, which are central parts of the university ethos and should be 
counter it wherever it is found. So this is the piece that we, we wrote and I just want to show you a little bit of the uh, of some images and some facts about our, our university. The University of Campinas, uh, it's uh, pictured here. It's a public university of the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil. We have three state universities in, in the state of Sao Paulo. The University of Campinas, the University of Sao Paulo, USP, and the University of the State of Sao Paulo, which is called UNESP. And we have uh, in the city of Campinas, which is a city of about 100 million, uh, 1 million inhabitants, uh, we have six, uh, and we have other campuses. We have 24 schools, three hospitals, uh, and we have about 40,000 students nowadays. This, this graph, I, I don't know what happened here. So we, uh, we are 100% tuition free. We don't charge anything for, for the students. And we have about nowadays 40,000 students and uh, a peculiar uh, profile which we has half graduate students and half of the students are undergraduate. And this is just to show you a little bit of a, the, the, the mood, the, the atmosphere of the campus. This, this was the, the occupation of the, of the office of the, of the rector of the time. And, the, and they, they, they made blockings on the classrooms and, and so on. This was 2016. And we don't understand yet what uh, really happened in that, in that, in, in that situation. Uh, after I took uh, the place of, uh, of, as a rector, I, I started April 22 this year, 2017. We already had some movements. This is, these are the, the security of the campus trying to block the students from invading our, our Senate. Uh, but they didn't manage. I will show you uh, some of the, let me, let me see if it's possible to show. I don't know if it's possible to see. Oh, sorry, it turned. They finally managed to invade. I don't know if it's possible to see anything. But here, after they invaded the, the Senate, they made a little bit of a... So this is more or less what we face every, well, not every day, but <laughs> I, every month, <laughs> I would say. Uh, I have some other links to show you uh, some of the, of the results and so on. So this is the final phrase that I already read. Uh, the idea is that we need to understand, we need to hear, we need, we need to dialogue more within the campus and most importantly was, was said before in many of the talks here with the society as a whole. Thank you very much.